Hi, yeah. first of all, it's an amazing honor. Um, I'm just wondering, how do you think that um, the focus on you and other whistleblowers as sort of cultural and political icons has affected attitudes toward whistleblowers and just the general need to hold powerful entities accountable? <laughs> this is a, a good question, but it's a very difficult question. Um, thank you for asking it. I, I think when we look at the public attention on uh, whistleblowers, uh, the message is very much mixed. Um, at least in the United States, uh, we have uh, Chelsea Manning, uh, who revealed uh, U.S. war crimes, like um, unlawful killings of civilians and journalists, uh, the unethical and unlawful treatment of detainees in Guantanamo Bay. People have forgotten about that, but much of that reporting uh, was informed by the work of Chelsea Manning and then WikiLeaks. Um, and then we go on and, and we go into the future. Uh, we see the stories uh, of people like Daniel Hale, uh, who was just arrested uh, as what the G DOJ alleges is a source uh, of reporting about the U.S. drone program uh, and extrajudicial killings there. Uh, when we talk about uh, Terry Albury, uh, who was ar arrested as a source of reporting um, related to the FBI's, uh, sort of abuse of racial minorities in, in their investigation practices. Uh, when we look at Reality Winner, um, who revealed uh, a single document, according to government, uh, from the NSA on the day uh, former FBI director James Comey uh, was fired by Donald Trump, uh, showing what the NSA analysts presumed to be or assessed to be um, Russian targeting of U.S. electoral infrastructure, which is a story which is actually very poorly covered in the United States uh, media relative to all the other sort of allegations that have happened in that sphere. Um, she got the longest sentence of a civilian whistleblower um, in, in, in uh, U.S. history, I believe, 63 months. Uh, so Chelsea Manning, who was sentenced to 35 years, she was in the military, so it was a slightly different system, was then uh, her had her sentence commuted by Barack Obama um, after seven years, was held in conditions uh, that the United Nations considered to be uh, equivalent to torture. Um, and then you see the case of myself uh, where I'm exiled, right? I was trying to go to Latin America and the United States government canceled my passport when they heard I had left Hong Kong en route uh, to Ecuador. And I applied for asylum in 21 different countries around the world, I think one of which was Canada, uh, but also Germany, France, places like that. Um, and none of them have been willing to let me come. Uh, so we see this larger awareness of whistleblowers. At the same time, we see an increasing um, sort of crackdown on them, both by the United States government and, very unfortunately, their allies. Um, and I think it's a very dark thing, uh, sort of a cruel irony. Um, the idea that the only way an American uh, who can reveal or who has revealed uh, uncontroversially uh, criminal acts by the United States government in violation of human rights, not just in the United States, but around the world, uh, is not safe in Canada or, or Europe. Um, I, I think that's a dangerous thing. And while the increased awareness of it and, and sort of public understanding of the importance of access to not just true, but provably true uh, facts in uh, uh, a paradigm where everybody's talking about things like fake news uh, is a very powerful force. Um, but I think it's very important that we, uh, as the public, look at all of these whistleblowers who are being in jail, right? Uh, and who are in circumstances that are very much worse than my own, uh, and we support them. And this just to, to bring it back to the reason that this talk is for the benefit of which this talk is being held. Uh, the families who helped protect me, right? Um, when I was in Hong Kong and I had nowhere to turn, I knocked on their door uh, and they opened it and they welcomed me in when they had nothing. You know, I was incredibly vulnerable. Uh, they knew it was a dangerous situation and yet they still helped me. Um, when we look at the concept of, of sort of whistleblowing and where it's going, I think as long as there are people like that still in the world who are still willing to stand up, uh, we still have a chance.